All right, now this is the um, mechanics. Uh, once you have the state diagram for your Markov model, how do you get it into a model formulation? This is not, there's no formulas here. There's no equalities or anything that's set up. There's no equations. How do we do that next piece? So I have the state diagram here so that we can look at it, um, recopied and pasted. The first step is to define my states in terms of variables. So n in this case, which we need to have, um, we should probably have it up at the top. I tend to cover my butt by saying in our n, they're explicitly stating inside the description that um, n stands for the hour. So Sn is the probability that baby Tommy is sleeping in our n. Pn is the probability that baby Tommy is pooping in our n. Cn is the probability that baby Tommy is crying in our n. And En is the probability that baby Tommy is eating in our n. So those are my variables that have now taken these pods and put them into something I can get my hands on. The next step is to take those variables and write down a recursion formula. Well, you can say, I didn't see a recursion formula from this pod thing that you're drawing, the state diagram, but there is one because I'm transitioning from one state to another based on where I am in the previous state. That's a recursion equation. And how do we do that? Well, if I look at Sn, um, Sn is this pod right here and the probability that from the previous state that I remain in Sn is 0.58. So 0.58 times Sn minus 1 tells me the probability of being in the state Sn again. Now I could also come in from pooping. So 0.30% chance that the pooping state ends up into the sleeping state. And so 0.30 times Pn minus 1 would be also included. I'm only looking at the in arrows, not the exit arrows. And you might ask yourself that, well, hey, you're not accounting for the things that are leaving, but this little loop here does. And so that's why I've already caught that inside that loop, the probability of remaining and the probability that I'm entering into the sleeping state from somewhere else. Now there's no other arrows going in um, from any of the other pods. So those are zeros. These are best practices as you go along. It's not how fast you finish the problem, it's how correct you get it. And so um, I tend to make a lot of little mistakes, so I put in what we call props, psychological props, so I don't make errors. So I put those zeros up there, so I remind myself that I have nothing coming from these two pods. And you'll see how that helps me in a minute. For PN, I do the same thing. I have nothing coming from pooping to, from sleeping to pooping, so that's a zero. 10% of pooping state, state stays in the pooping state. Some 20% of the crying state enters the pooping state. And 70% of the eating state enters the pooping state. And so now I have the PN equation. And then I can keep going. The CN equation is done exactly the same way. And the EN is also done exactly the same way. You've noticed here that I've lined up the variables right here, so they're all lined up. I'm doing this on purpose to make things easy for myself. So um, the biggest mistakes I see, or I have seen, is that cadets will forget the, in, the looping back to itself because sometimes that's not explicitly stated in the word problem that you're reading, but it has to be there to make things total up correctly. Um, so you have to figure that piece out by yourself that I need, maybe they'll say there's a 42% chance from going from sleeping to crying, but they don't tell you there's a 58% chance to stay sleeping, but it must be so because that has to total up to be 100%. The second mistake I see is people are in a rush. They want to just get the equation down. So they just count all the arrows and then they'll have an SN over here. They'll have a CN over here. They'll have a PN over here and everything's mismatched. And then the end, uh, when they get to the solution portion, it ends up going haywire and it doesn't look, it's, it come, becomes incorrect. And so just bookkeeping and taking a little time right at this point to line everything up is going to save you a lot of grief later on. So there's my equation. 
I have now transformed my real world problem into a mathematical formulation, a mathematical model. I can also check my work. The coefficients of the Markov model should total up to be one going down. So let's see if that's true. It is 58 plus 42 is 100%. 30 plus 10 plus 60 is 100%. And so you see that on each one of these, it works out. So I have little checks along the way. They're eyeball checks. They don't take the time that I'm spending on it to explaining this to you here. They're just a quick cross check to make sure nothing's been left out and I have the right model in place. So now you're ready to answer number three on the feedback. Remember, this is not a test. Um, this is just feedback to see how well things have been communicated so um, we can discuss it tomorrow.